first as an adoption specialist, then as pregnancy counselor. She is a graduate of Michigan State University, I like that, and is passionate about her work with children and families. She's married to Paul and has two children, herself, Ken, who's uh, 24, and Lily, nine. Lisa will share the story of tonight's testimonial family, and I've been told to warn you to get your Kleenex ready. Lisa Wisniewski. Bob came 
and breezed past us through the kitchen and down the hallway with all of his belongings, which consisted of two duffel bags, all in the meantime saying, Where do I sleep? <laughs> he seemed quite content after spending the entire morning and all of the afternoon at NCF's lobby while they tried to locate a family. But once he breezed by, I asked the caseworker, I'm like, who is this again? Because <laughs> it was just a blur. Just, um, once he slowed down long enough, he got to meet us, uh, the family who had had him for uh, about 10 days. And he seemed quite content. Man, I am shaking. How they read my own papers up there? Um, he seemed quite content, um, but he was underweight. He needed a shower, and he looks tired. Um, but he seemed happy nonetheless. Um, there's one thing you'll notice about Bob is that no matter the circumstances, he almost always has a smile on his face. And as nervous as he is right now, this is saying a lot. <laughs> After our 10 days with Bob, we met with our caseworker again, who was insistent that we, uh, that Bob remain with us. We were unsure only due to the, the fact that we weren't quite prepared to have another teen boy in the house. But during this meeting, we also heard that Bob had lost all of his belongings in his last placement, which was his second adoption. Uh, his first adoption almost la it lasted almost 10 years, and that's what landed him on CFS's doorstep to begin his journey in foster care. We left for vacation only to be continuously bugged by our caseworker throughout the entire vacation that we seriously consider being a, a more permanent placement for him. And upon several conversations and much thought, we decided that our home would be the best fit. I gotta stop looking at him because he's making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next couple months were very interesting as Bob adjusted to our family and our way of doing things. He, he jumped right up when asked to, to help with chores and he always offered to help around the house and he did a wonderful job. And now this is not typical of teens, especially boys, but that has still not changed to this day. Our counselor at the time gave us every reason to be cautious in saying that we would soon see behavioral issues from Bob, from of course, as you would assume, from his trauma. And that was two years ago, I'm still waiting to see any behavioral issues. That doesn't mean to go ahead, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, so, Lisa, I thought you were staying up here. She yeah, go ahead and run back to the ice cream. <laughs> so, um, uh, so uh, Lisa also bugged every month in hopes that I would adopt Bob, and at the time, I just told her that I just wasn't quite ready, but yet I knew that I didn't want Bob to go anywhere else, and that my home was his home. Over the next several months, though, I did, I did however think of it, I, I contemplated adopting him every single time that Lisa would call me, and I, I realized one thing, though, is that he is totally my son. I tell people, though, that if I didn't have to be there to give birth, He's totally my kid, and I just mean that he displays mannerisms that I had as a kid that nobody, that he would have no idea of that he displays on a regular basis. And you really didn't just do that. That is something that I would totally do. But anyway, so it wasn't until October 2011 that I decided it was time to call Bob, my son, permanently and legally. I spoke with our caseworker, Robin, and Lisa, and our at-the-time counselor, and I told him my plan, which was to present Bob with a adoption certificate that I would make and frame and give it to him on Christmas Day. I told him to keep it a secret while we went through the adoption process behind the scenes, in which they did a very nice job. He had no idea. So it's Christmas morning at my mom's in Mount Pleasant, and all the gifts are opened except this one, which contained his certificate in a frame that was in a shirt box. So I handed it to him. And he immediately opened it. And oh, by the way, uh, my family had no idea what I was about to do. So it was, it was a well-kept secret. So I was sitting next to him. I moved across to sit with my mom on the couch. And I handed the box to Bob, who opened it. He peeled back the tissue paper, <laughs> took one look inside, turned red, and closed the box. <laughs> I said, well, honey, nobody knows what's in there. And he said, Jen. Trying not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, the whole entire family just melted at that point. But at, at, So I take the certificate from him. I hand it to my mom, 
who immediately starts to cry, and she hugs me, and in my ear she says, Jennifer, thank you so much for giving me another grandson. <laughs> He looked at me with the biggest smile on his face and said, This is the best Christmas ever! <laughs> Once we got home, I'm almost done. Once we got home, uh, throughout the night, he just kept coming up to me, giving me hugs, and just this ear to ear grin, similar to what he's displaying right now. And I eventually stopped him and I said, Bob, did you really not think that I was going to adopt you? No, actually I figured once I graduated, I'd move out. And I gave him a big hug and I said, no, now you're stuck with me. <laughs> now, we have had some rough times. <laughs> what family doesn't? But we work through them together, just the two of us. And he's very good at problem solving. But I do think that it's still hard for him to grasp the fact that I'm not going anywhere. And I hope that one day you truly understand and believe in your heart that I am your mom and you are my son. Those two come out of their shell. <laughs> <laughs>